Hi guys, my name is Martin. Today I'm going to show you how I did this 3D interaction on my website popandstrange.com. Yeah, something like this. So I've been playing a lot with this very interesting 3D interactive tool called Spline, spline.design if you guys see this website. Basically, it allows you to do a lot of interesting 3D interaction like this. See, it's really it's really fun and it's really easy to use. They also have a very good YouTube channel where they teach a lot of things. You can visit their YouTube channel and learn from the tutorials there. So yeah, back to my project. So if you guys see, actually there's a lot of things happening here. Um, this is my website but I'm going to use the spline tool itself to demonstrate a lot of things. Because here uh, I actually have implemented this sound interaction as well yeah so there's a few things that are happening here if you guys see when I hover my mouse all the text are uh, kind of like looking at it and when I hover it actually uh, change state to something else something like this yeah so I'm and if I hover like this if I click and drag actually we can do crazy stuff like this yeah okay let's get into the tutorial we are at spline.design website now and let's click open app to start designing this is my previous project and let's create a new file by default spline giving you rectangle and directional light so to navigate in this space you can click and hold option or alt and windows and you can hover your mouse like this and to zoom in and zoom out you can hold command in mac uh, or control in window and then mi middle mouse button so you can scroll in and scroll out like this and to pan you can use your click and hold your middle mouse and you can pan left and right or up and down or you can also use spacebar hold spacebar and left click to hover around like this yeah so that's basically the basic navigation and we will explore slowly what are all these things means so for the beginning I don't really need uh, the default stuff that they give us so I will just select both of them and then delete them for this tutorial actually we will only create four letters I'm not gonna recreate everything because that will be too long I'm just gonna create four that represent the technique that we're going to use. So before we start, it's uh, actually it's a good idea to sketch first what we want to do. On my case, I just quickly use Photoshop and I roughly draft out. I want to make these four letters dope. We're going to use this technique called uh, box modeling combined with subdivision surface modeling. So first of all, I want to create cube, this tool, and then I can just click and drag if you hold shift it will maintain the cube uh, as a perfect square proportional perfect square don't worry if the position is um, everywhere like this if you want to reset the position of this cube to the middle you can always come here and just zero out all the numbers and it will be in the middle okay so first of all we will convert this into smooth and edit if i click this by default what it does is rounding your cube but you still have the skeleton of the cube so what i want to do is um, i want to extrude this go up so if we see my sketch here i want to start the cube here and then i want to extrude down so if i make like this so you can see easier what i'm planning to do this is our first cube and i will extrude down and then extrude down and then extrude to the right like this and eventually it will form a letter d Okay, so I'm going to click select the bottom one and I'm going to click this this is the extrude tool if I click and drag down like this you can see that it's actually extending the bottom part I'm going to extend one more time and maybe one more time 
Don't worry too much about uh, getting things perfect. We can always readjust things on the go. If you click and drag the arrow, it will only move the surface, but it doesn't create a new segment. If you want to create a new segment, you need to use this. So this is what we're going to do. We were going to move again to the right. And we can also bring it up and start rotating it because we want to create a curve. Okay, now uh, we can refine these letters and you can use this uh, edge selection tool to refine certain things that you don't really like. Like for example, let's say you want to move this there. Double click. Yeah, when you double click, you can select the whole thing and then we can start moving things around. Maybe you want it here. You can also use this tool actually, like a uh, loop. Hang on. Let me... Yeah, double click this and then you can select like this. Yeah, it's a similar uh, function. Something else that I want to show you guys is uh, if we see this one, you see that actually each of the letter in the middle of the segment, there's a different sizing. So we can also do that. If I come back here, um, let's see. Let's say I want to make this side slimmer. I can use this tool again, double click. Sometimes the selection doesn't really work well. So I need to, yeah, something like this. And then on the dot, if you hold shift and then you bring it like this, it will make it smaller. Yeah, so you can also play with that. Yeah, okay. Uh, you can, of course, spend time to refine your letter, but um, let's move on. We can also, uh, so this is the subdivision modifier. If you increase this level, it will actually smooth out things. But uh, the more number you put, the heavier your scene will become. So we need to carefully uh, find the balance of this. If you don't see the need to increase this, just keep it at the um, certain number. For my case, I will just keep it at 3 first for now. And uh, let's make this more feasible let's change the background color so if we click, click the if we double click outside uh, we will enter the main scene again if you want to re-edit this thing you can always double click and we will access back the editable mode so let's change uh, double click outside and then i want to change the background color i will click outside we can change it to something brighter like this maybe and okay yeah uh, let's design the second letter i'm going to move this to the side because this is the center of the canvas so maybe i will move it here and i will create new cube something like this and i will reset position again going here zero 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 i'm pressing tab to move around between uh, all these three Yeah, so let's see what we're going to do here. Oh, actually, actually for this letter O, I'm going to use different technique. So I will just put this aside first for the next letter. And I will use, I will add this and then I will find, so Spline Tool has a bunch of template that you can use actually. We're going to use Taurus. And then I will draw something like this. Holding Shift again to keep things proportional. If I don't hold shift, it will. you can uh, freestyle it like this. But this seems like better for me. So I'm just gonna do this. 
and you can see we have some kind of donut here okay i'm going to reset the position of this donut so zero tap zero tap zero and you can also see there's a little bit of weird rotation here so i'm going to reset the rotation everything to zero so it's in the perfect center okay so we're going to make this editable as well so this is what you call as a parametric uh, object parametric object means like uh, you can change certain things like this they have certain parameter that you can change but once you turn it into smooth and edit it will turn it into permanent uh, object like this and then you have to you cannot retrieve back the uh, original yeah so just bear in mind that this is a permanent thing okay let's uh, make certain parts actually i think i don't need this much segment so i will command z to undo i think our segment is too much actually let's make this a bit brighter so i'm gonna change the color to something brighter like this so i can see better okay i want to show the wireframe so we can see how many segments here yeah we don't need too much we just need probably like this because the smooth and edit will smooth it out anyway yeah something like this i think let me see the wireframe again Maybe we need a little bit more here. Actually, no, I think we just need like about four sides. Because the principle is similar like the uh, box modeling. We just need four sides for things to be smoothed out. Okay, let's hide the wireframe and let's smooth and edit this. You see by default, once we turn it into a smooth and edit, which is the subdivision modeling, then it will become smooth. And we can always increase this to number three. And you will see that it will turn it into similar like uh, the smooth donut. Okay, let's uh, make things, certain things smaller and bigger. Maybe like for example, this one, I'll double click and then hold shift and then maybe like make it like this. Maybe it's a bit too much. And let's do this one but for our case we want to make it this bigger again there's no right or wrong for this so it's up to you and we also will explore another way to make it not so uniform later so I think I will leave it at this at the moment and let's move on to the next letter you can always name things like for example this one we can call it double click here and then we can call it D and this one we can call it O let's call this P
cool let's make things so um there's another tool that we can use say for so for example let's say you think that you need to add more segment here we can always use this tool loop cut so if you see when you hover like this it will cut exactly at the middle in between the two um, segment here so i want to add something here so i can make it smaller in the middle like this and i want to add something here as well so i can do this and uh, let's increase this into three so it becomes smoother yeah let's say maybe i let's let's add something here as well Okay, I think roughly we get the whole letter. Let's let's position it like this. Okay. Uh, the next step, let's get into material. 